Welcome to Champion Minded, the podcast for those who aim for excellence, not only in the sports arena, but in life. My name is Alistair McCaw, author, speaker, mindset and performance coach, and my goal is to help you unleash your unlimited potential and provide you with the tools to achieve greatness. Are you ready to become Champion Minded? Then let's do this. Welcome to the Champion Minded Podcast and welcome to this Formula One special. It is the end of the year. We have one race to go in Abu Dhabi on Sunday. It could not be a more exciting finish to a season. It's probably one of the best seasons I've seen in over 30 years of watching Formula One. I mean, I remember the duels between Alain Prost and Ayrton Senna. We know what happened there on the last race of the season. Also with Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve. Um, could the same thing happen in Abu Dhabi on Sunday with Lewis Hamilton and uh, Max Verstappen? Now, interesting enough is that they changed the track. They've actually redesigned the track from last season where Max Verstappen easily won. The year before that, Lewis won there. So both the Mercedes and the Red Bulls have performed very well in Abu Dhabi, which makes it even more interesting and exciting. Now, you might rem- if you are a Formula 1 fan, you might know that certain tracks were labeled as... Uh, tracks that suited certain cars that well in the past five years they either suited the Red Bulls or they suited the Mercedes but this season 2021 has been like a season and no other where it's just been flipped upside down now bringing back onto the podcast for the third time is my good friend Enrique Binaldi Enrique Binaldi raced for uh, two seasons uh, three seasons actually I think it was for the Arrows team he was the teammate of Max Verstappen's uh, father, Jos Verstappen. Um, Enrique also was the test driver for BAR Honda. And I wanted to get him on just a few days before the grand finale in Abu Dhabi of the 21, uh, 2021 season to get his thoughts and views on the two drivers, his predictions for this weekend's race, and of course, uh, his uh, assessment of the 2021 season. But before we get into this one with Enrique, my new book, Lead With Purpose, Make an Impact, is now available on Amazon. Yes, guys, I even have some Formula One stuff in there on leadership, talking about Toto Wolff and Mercedes, as well as Red Bull and Christian Horner. So check that out. It's Lead With Purpose, Make an Impact, 44 Lessons in Coaching and Leadership. It's available on Amazon. All right, let's get to it. This is Enrique Benaldi. Enrique, welcome back. It's the third time you're back on the podcast, the most of any of my guests. <laughs> yes, it's a pleasure for me and always nice you know, to chat with you, my friend. Well, last time we spoke was after Spa Francochon, where, where that race was uh, canceled because of the weather, the rain, the flooding. And they, the guys ended up with with uh, points, but half points. And that's why we see now with a few days to go until the grand finale in Abu Dhabi, the big showdown between Max and Lewis, the points stand at 369.5 for each, each driver. Now, my first question to you, is this one of the seasons that will go down in F1 history? I believe so. You know, it's uh, uh, if you see uh, with all the... With all the episodes and all the the way the race is developed during the season, you couldn't ask for a better final. In the last race, two drivers which been on top of their game the, the whole year, equal in points, almost equal in wins. So it is a race that can be decided by one point. You you finish ten, the other one the finish eleven. You're the champion. It's uh it's the best thing that could happen for a. For the final, for the last race, for of course. Now, I was just looking at a at a few stats this morning, and I saw this on Twitter, which is my my favorite go to. That even if Max finishes second to Lewis, he'll have scored the most podiums ever in a Formula One season, being first or second in every race except uh, uh, Hungary, which which uh, was that crash, of course, and become only the sixth driver in history to get nine wins in a season and still wouldn't win the title. Of course, that's if, if he comes second. So it's down to nine wins for Max, um, Lewis, eight. Now, if they were to crash or something happened, on, if both guys didn't finish on Sunday, what would happen? Who would win? 
I, I believe if both has zero points, Max wins because of the, uh, he has one more win. Uh, yes, I, I would not, you know, if I have to bet, I would bet that this has a big chance to happen, that they both crash. So, uh, history, so history could repeat itself with, with Jacques Villeneuve, Michael Schumacher, Prost, Senna, those famous, those famous corner takeouts. Yes, I, I, you know, if that would be my first pick because uh, seeing the way they race, uh, seeing the way they race through their careers, Lewis is an aggressive driver, uh, but he needs to finish ahead. Max is super aggressive and a crash gives him the title. So the crash happened already twice, three times this season between both of them. And especially now, which is the price there, whoever, you know, I think I wouldn't bet that uh, this can happen. I think especially because Lewis seems to be a little bit with a better car now, and slightly better. So if Max they led... Changed, they changed the engine three races ago in, where was it? Um, Brazil. Brazil, they changed the engine. Yes. I think, yes, they changed the engine. He, uh, I'm not a very, uh, I'm not an expert about how those engines uh, can perform and how is the uh, lifespan of the engine. But uh, from what I heard from the races that I've been there this year working for FIA, uh, every race, the engine has a little bit of degradation. And so they, they are limited for the number of laps that they can push the engine to his max power. So having a newer, a fresher engine gives uh, Lewis a little bit of an advantage. Abu Dhabi is a track that has two very long straight lines, which the engine is, it's counts a lot. Plus is at sea level where normally Mercedes perform at best with the engine, with the turbo. Uh, if you see Honda performs very well in Sao Paulo, performs well at Mexico City. Um, the result in Sao Paulo about the engine has been a mask this year because Lewis had a fresh new engine he, they just installed in the car for that race. So that's why he had so much power advantage. But, but uh, historically Honda is good in high altitude um mercedes is good in sea level so abu dhabi being in sea level being having long straight lines i think power wise lewis might have a bit of an edge over max now I, I believe that they've changed the the circuit they've remodified abu dhabi will that change anything i don't think we'll improve so much about the overtaking um it, it's from from the from the drawings that I saw is a is a is a gincane which has been removed, placing a 190 um, degree turn, which is uh, I don't see changing much for about overtaking. Will be maybe changing about the lap time, of course, and also about the maybe the show for the spectators because that gincane which it was formerly done there, it was a little bit like without much character, you know, just going around blocks of cones and high curbs. So I, I see it as a good change. Um, let's see, but you know, if the crash happens, can be on the left, third one, can be anywhere during the race with the crashes between them. And just, I, I believe Max will go with the mentality that he cannot let Lewis lead for a single turn. So you can't you can't let him get out front and, and, and get away, especially like you said, with, with that new engine, for example. But getting back, and there's so much I want to unravel here of just how exciting this season's been because the last four seasons in you know, 2016, we had the Rosberg Hamilton showdown, which came down to Abu Dhabi as well. So many forget that that five years ago we had a pretty close title shot as well. But the importance of those, as we've seen throughout the season, getting the one point for the fastest lap or strategically from Red Bull or Mercedes having uh, Sergio Perez or, or uh, Valtteri getting that one point to take it away from the other team. I mean, it's all just come down to, to like you just mentioned at the beginning of the show, one point. Yes, it has been. It has been perfect. They played really nicely. Both teams, I think they... You know, mistakes are done during the during a, uh, such a long season, but I think 
to get their equal in points, it proved that Mercedes and, and Red Bull were on the top of their games, also performance-wise and strategic-wise. Um, five years ago, Lewis was in the last race fighting with um, Rosberg. Yes, correct. But Max is a completely different beast compared to Rosberg. He is a much faster, in my personal opinion, he's a faster driver, more aggressive driver, more talented. So Lewis will have a, a more difficult uh, matchup in the last race. And I think that what makes this, this season such, so interesting because yeah, we're not seeing two great drivers fighting for the championship. We're seeing two probably uh, top five ever drivers fighting for, uh, for, for, for the title, like it was Senna and, and Prost, you know? And so that, we, that, is, uh, that is what makes such a big deal uh, Sunday race. Now, talking about strategy and so on and so forth, do you think it wasn't Toto Wolff's plan to change that engine in, in Brazil, that that was already premeditated, that was planned before, that they could have, you know, those last five races with, with a new engine? Because... They took a, or did they take a gamble that, that he would be at the back of the grid? That's the penalty for, uh, for a new engine, right? It's, it, you go to the back of the grid for a new engine. And then, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, as I'm talking to you now, I'm thinking about it because that was a weekend where they had the, um, what do they call it? The short race the day before? Yes, yes, the, the sprint race. Thank you, thank you. So they had the sprint race. So it gave him you know, an extra chance to move up the grid and, 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 and qualify a little higher. Yes, I think, I think strategically was good for them. Uh, uh, they have to take, I think, for Red Bull, um, Max crashing in Silverson, I believe, damaged some parts of his engine. So Red Bull was a little bit with a smaller window to make their engine change. So they, they took it in, in Turkey when I was there. Normally the teams, you would say, that's what they do. They take the engine change in a track where they think they will perform uh, not as his best. So uh, by the layout of Turkey, for some reason, they decided to take it there and Max ended up finished second. So they were celebrating. So we took a gamble. We, we changed the engine. He starts from last and finished second. That's a win. Even Max Verstappen said that after the, after the race. Um, so Toto Wolf takes the gamble in Sao Paulo, which is the least favorite track for, for Mercedes because it's high altitude. But they had a little bit of a day playing well because they had the sprint race as a chance to requalify. Remember that also Lewis get... Um, Another penalty, I don't remember why, and he drops five places from on the grid. So he started from 10. And winning that race, I think nobody expected. I think that was a big turnover uh, of events. That, that's what changed the momentum of the, the last part of the championship because they won a race starting from last. That's incredible. Of course, they had a power advantage, yes, but it's always <laughs> difficult to... To win a race starting from pole, imagine starting from last. So uh, I think that was a, a gamble which paid off and changed the momentum of the of the last part of the championship. Plus, I would say, by the way the cars are performing, I don't think is only everything. The, the difference on performance between mid season and now, I don't think it's all all related to the a little bit of extra power. I think Mercedes has found something also in the car uh, aerodynamically or mechanically because they also they they became a bit faster too fast to be only the engine yeah um i mean that was one of the most uh, amazing drives ever in, in formula one coming from the very back of the grid and, and and finishing the weekend but like you said there was you know with the sprint race there's there's two qualifying sessions so it did give them a bit of a chance but regardless it's, it goes down as one of the best drives ever from behind the grid Christian Horner, uh, team principal of Red Bull, said something very, very interesting this week um, on, uh, I think it was on, on Sky Sports, saying that, uh, you know, he was very, very proud of the team, regardless what happens. Of course, they want to win. He's a serial winner like Toto himself. But he, he mentioned, and I'm sure Adrian knew he won't be too happy about this, but they had the inferior car this season. And I don't know if he's playing mind games or whatever, but 
Would you say that Red Bull did have the inferior car this season to the Mercedes? I mean, I can understand it in the last three or four races, but that comment about the whole season? It's, uh, I don't agree with this comment because um, a, a, a season that starts in March and ends in December, uh, trust me, Formula One is not like a spec uh, category that you get the car, you just rebuild and you change the parts that you use. And Formula One is not like that. Formula One, you get developments, uh, aerodynamic developments. So you have the wind tunnel working 24 hours a day. You have the simulator going uh, limitless. So they are improving the cars through the whole season. Every every race you have a new a new a new update on the car. Otherwise, you fall back. That's why you see some teams starting on the front. They don't have much money and they just drop back during the season. So I don't agree that that. Um, Red Bull was inferior through the season. I believe at some point of the season, from let's say from May to September, they were the best car. They would not, they could not win, would lose a race. And if you know, if 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 Max wasn't there, Paris was winning a race. And Paris winning over Hamilton, it says a lot for the car because Hamilton was a far superior driver. So they had a good car. Uh, they had the best car for many months during the season. I think they had some bad luck with some crashes and they had some, of, I think now at the end of the season, Mercedes is a little bit slightly better, but I don't think it's the right thing to say that they always played with the inferior car. I think they also won a lot having the best car. Of course, so, talking about that bad luck, not just was it Hungary, but it was also in Azerbaijan where he hit the wall, Max hit the wall. Azerbaijan, he had a tire. He, that was a winning race. The tire, the tire uh, blew up. Uh, I think I, I wasn't that race. I was a, a, a FIA steward there. Uh, I think it was like let's say three laps to go, four laps to go. Yeah. But it's always, you know, they blew up the tire. It's always a gamble because Pirelli gives them after um, they see how the, the, the track gets rubber down. They see what's the, they have a prediction that the tire will be, will last for, uh, let's say for 24 laps, the hard tire. But as the, the, the track gets more rubber, the life of the tire extends at one, two, three laps sometimes. So they always gamble. I think uh, they were gambling not to do the another pit stop. The, the, the strategies are always pushed to the max and they, it was a bad luck that three laps to go, his tire blew up on the straight line and caused the the caused the the red flag. But then this bad luck has been sort of remediated because Lewis does a mistake trying to pass Paris on on the restart and end up out of the point. So it's a bit of balance, you know. Of course, Max would have won the race. That's the bad luck, but the damage could have been even more. If Lewis wouldn't do the mistake and finish first or second, we could have been now talking about Lewis being 15 points ahead, or we could have been talking about Max being 12 points ahead. So it's all part of the game, you know. Some bad luck, some good luck, it happens. Yeah, it's pretty much you know we're looking at those stats of Max and Lewis there, and and um, you know uh, Max has led for something like 650 laps of the season to Lewis is 250 something. I don't know what the exact stat is, but it's thereabouts. And here we are again, last race equal points. It's almost like a tennis match. And I know you're a big tennis fan as well, is that you can win more points in a tennis match and still lose the match. Yes. Yes. I was going to say this. You took the words out of my mouth. Uh, Lewis won led mainly the important laps. Max won major the majority of the laps do you say if, if you lead for 600 laps in the season you have the, the the weaker car i don't agree with that comment from christian horner you know at some stages now maybe the car is a bit weaker but at some stage the car was far better so it has been uh, max has been the most let's say performance overall performance has been i think better than lewis and Lewis has been also, I think, looking from the beginning of his career to now, he's always been very fast, but now he's a little bit more robotic. He does less mistakes. He's a little bit more like Schumacher style, you know, 
uh, getting always the max what, from what he has on his hands. So I think that comes with the experience. And that's what he, he showed this year. He, he won the, the, he led the, the important laps, would be in the tennis, he would always win his breaking po break points or he would break always, points, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's what happened. Let's look at, um, let's look at Checo, Checo Perez just quickly. Do you think he's maximized and done the best he can in, in the second Red Bull this season? I think he did a solid job. I think uh, uh, if you see mistakes, he, had, he did very little mistakes, which is what you expect from a sort of like a number two driver. He optimized sometimes what he could. The, the truth is that he's, he's just a bit slower than Max and at Lewis. So he can't compete at equal guns with, with those two. But uh, I think he did I think he did a good job, you know. Also, I think he was more, let's say, if you compare the, the two, the two number two drivers, I think I think overall he did a, a slightly better job. Bottas than Valtteri. Yes, yes. Valtteri, Valtteri sometimes he he has, let's we say, like the, the cheese and the the cheese and the knife, and he just don't cut the cheese, you know. He just don't don't get the just don't get the the what he's supposed to do, you know. It's just like sometimes like how many times he could have made Max's life more difficult, and he was just not able to. Paris tried everything. I think he he maximized it into his abilities uh, better than Valtteri. I would well, say Valtteri, Valtteri didn't do what you did to uh, Coulthard in, in Monaco and keep him keep him behind for 30 laps. No, but that's not that's not him. No, that's not Valtteri. <laughs> he could not have done that. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, he's a he's a fast driver. You know, if you give him the fast car, he will maybe in some tracks, he will stick the car in pole position. He will win the race. But in the next three, he will lack somewhere, somewhere, and we're not going to, you know, that's why he's going to, I, I believe he did a way too long career in the Mercedes car. And, and yeah, it's, it is what it is, you know. Do you, do you think, do you think that Lewis played a big factor in that and wanting to keep Valtteri there? Because he wasn't like, of course, the Rosberg years were turbulent and those two guys just absolutely despised each other. I mean, it was turbulent there at, at, at Mercedes um, and they definitely decided on right. Our next driver is someone that's not going to, to uh, upset the apple cart. Yes, uh, of course, of course. Of course, Lewis being the leading driver on the team, he wanted Valtteri because it's calm. There is no drama. There is, you know, he would do whatever he's asked. And I see Checo, I see Checo in the same type of role and same type of personality in a way. He's not a guy that's very controversial or trying to get in your face. Yes, I think I think they are both very I think they're both very experienced. I think uh, Paris and Valtteri they are in front of one like, think, like 10 years. So they have a lot of experience. They are not, they are fast drivers. I'm, I'm not criticizing the, their speed, uh, just saying that they're not champions. And, and a team which is fighting for the championship, they will, they need some drivers like that to keep the, the atmosphere, to keep things quiet and to deliver the job, which is to take points away from the other team whenever they can. I believe Checo tried and did better than Valtteri this year that because uh, sometimes Valtteri was just like doing mistakes by himself, and uh, this didn't help the Mercedes. And uh, and yeah, I, I'm sure Lewis liked to have him there. So, it, so it definitely wasn't a a Prost uh, Senna uh, team teammates. I mean, for me, and this just shows my age of going back to what I remember. And of course, one uh, before I go into that, listeners, one of my first memories of Enrique was him keeping Coulthard behind for 30 laps. And I was thinking to myself, who is this guy? For 44 I mean, laps. For 44 laps. For 44 <laughs> I, laps. I wish it was 30 because I would be less exhausted. <laughs> and they were furious on the radio. And I don't think Coulthard spoke to you for a few years after that, probably. So <laughs> we speak now. He's a nice guy. We are, we are friends now, you know. The same way that I, I met Yoz in Turkey and we are friends in, now, you know, it's... Well, you know, you've been, 
you've been so long around in competitions and competing yourself. So, you know, once you are competing, it's there is no place for friendship. You know, you're all competing against each other. After that, it's just part of the game. Um, yes, it's, um, I think that uh, definitely having Walter in the team, it's not Prost and Senna, you know, because Luis is, you know, he, he Luis knows that he will control Valtteri during the season. Valtteri might get three pole positions, might win two races, which, you know, that's the, the, the price to, to, to pay, to have like the, to be in the big team, to be in the best team. And you, you also want your teammate to be close to you, you know? Yeah, to, to, to protect you in a way. Now, before we go into the predictions for this weekend's race in Abu Dhabi, the 23rd race of the seasons, um, Kimi Raikkonen's uh, career of, of 20 years comes to an end uh, in Abu Dhabi on, on, uh, on Sunday. And of course, we all know that Kimi is one of the, the funniest, driest guys on, on the circuit, for example. We know he's a massive fan of driving, but not a massive fan of the media and everything else. Um, how would you sum up Kimi's career? Well, I think uh, Kimi is, um, is a driver that... Um has a huge talent, natural talent. Um, he won one world championship, probably by his ability, he could have one more. Um, he's funny, as you said, uh, with the media, he talks quite straight, uh, which <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, he's a, uh, yes, he's, um, he's a difficult, he, personally, he's not like a, a, a friend of mine I race with him but uh he's not like a guy that I had much contact but he is very very fast and he's very talented I think now in the last two years he's not the same Kimi that uh, won the races that won the title and I believe also when he was a little bit the end of his days in Ferrari now he was a little bit slowing down I think uh he had a great you know I'm gonna ch I'm gonna challenge you on that one because a few times this season in the Alpha, he, uh, you know, through the speed trap that they do on, on free, free practice on the Thursday and Friday, uh, on the Friday, sorry, um, he's had the fastest, uh, fastest speed. So number one, that Alpha is very, very fast that Valtteri is going to be going to next year. Um, obviously, you know, with, with Formula One, it's, it's, you know, everything else that goes into, it's not just how fast your car is down the straight, but he still is able to, you know, push that thing at 346 kilometers per hour down a straight. Um, I think uh, I think that the, the, the speed trap um, um, speeds, it says a lot, yes, it says a lot for the, for uh, how you can be fast on a, on a race. If you, it's, it's measurement like uh, how you can overtake, how you can defend yourself in a race situation. Um, I drove a car which was very fast, the, the Aeros 2001 with the Asia Tech engine, not because the engine was fast. The engine was sort of like even on the weaker uh, side of the, of the grid. But the, the drag, the car, the car was very efficient with the drag. And the car had uh, no drag at all, but also no downforce. And if you see many times, if you, if you go through the stats, me and, and Jos, uh, we've been fastest, we've been top five fasts on the straight lines. And then if you see the, the result on the, on the qualify, we were uh, from 15 backwards. So straight line speed, yes, it's good, yes. But if the car, if the car doesn't generate downforce when you go into the turns, you're going nowhere. Um, I think that, um, I think the fact that uh, Giovanazzi out qualified him quite a few times, I think it says that he's not the same Kimi, you know? The real that the 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 Kimi at the top of his game, I don't believe Giovanazzi would uh, ever out qualified him, and it's just a little bit like situation like Russell and uh, Latifi, you know. I think if Kimi was still at the top of his game, that wouldn't have happened. I think if Kimi was the Kimi from McLaren time, the Kimi from the first uh, Ferrari trip, I think he would have gave uh, Sebastian Vettel a harder time in the same car in the last four years. 
So he had a great that career. Lotus, that, that Lotus in 2012, 2013 was fast as well. I mean, let's remember, he, you know, he scored a few podiums uh, with, with, with Grosjean as his teammate. No, no, I think at that time he was driving still very well. It's always, it's always, um, Alistair, it's always difficult if you stop, if you go to another category, it's always difficult to be, if you were at 100%, maybe you get to 98, 97, 96%. You know, it's always very difficult if you have a stoppage to, 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 to rematch your, your, your speed from, from, from the previous years. And he had it when he went to NASCAR, whatever he did, rally, you know, it's a little bit of a, a focus breaking. I believe you, we've seen that with Schumacher. He stopped for three years, he came back. It was hard for him. So, yes, I believe Kimi was one of the best, undoubtedly, before stopping. He was great after that, but the last few years, he, he was not at the top of his game. And, but even though, uh, remarkable career, and for sure, he will be, be one of a uh, Hall of Famer, you know. Definitely some of the be post, best post-match interviews. Actually, this one after Saudi Arabia, which was last week. I don't know if you saw it. No, I, I didn't see his last one, but uh, he that, that's that's something that he's the best ever. After post race interviews, he's the best ever. He's well, like a, well, they asked him. They, they asked him, you know, what did you think of of the track? You know, this was after the race. And he, his, his reply was, "I don't care. I won't be here next year." <laughs> no, I think the one of the best ones he did. I think two or three races ago, the journalist has him. Oh, so how was your race? He looks at the guy and he says, "You didn't watch." <laughs> so, yeah yeah he didn't watch <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's he must be one of the most difficult guests to have on a podcast or, or something just to you know uh, you know we usually as a podcast host you've got to prepare questions you know and um on a podcast of say with you I'd, I'd prepare six or eight questions and we can talk around them i think with kimmy you'd have to prepare around about 60 to 100 questions because the answers could be could be one line or or ten seconds, so you, you could run out pretty pretty quick. But um, well, maybe, maybe you're, you're being positive about maybe could the answer could be a word. Exactly, exactly. Yes. <laughs> awesome stuff, uh, Enrique. To finish off, of course, I have to ask you uh, two questions. Besides Max and Lewis, who would your driver of the year be? Uh, I, in my opinion, London Norris. I think I think he he has he has of course he has a good car. He it's getting really. Uh, he didn't win a race, almost won a race in in Sochi. Um, drove. I was in that race. I was the steward in that race, and he he drove a, a fantastic race. He was uh, able to handle Hamilton behind him in a Mercedes. In dump situations with slick tires, uh, he gambled on the on this strategy, which I would have done the same. And I think Lando Norris, I think the way also he beat it, uh, Ricardo in the same car. I you think. Know, I'd say the Ricardos maybe had a better second half of the season. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, second better half of the season. Yes, but I think he's still Lando. Uh, apart from Monza, I think Lando is still on top of him. Uh, Lando is being I mean, I, again. I'm going to count you there a little bit because, you know, obviously, you know, Lando has been in the McLaren for the season before, and and you know, Daniel came in and just couldn't get used to that car at all. Now it looks like he's growing with confidence with it, and so on and so forth. Yes, 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 and oh yes. So there is, there is this happens sometimes when you guy get in the team. And takes a little while to 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 match the the teammate do because the teammate is already longer in the team. But uh, remember, Senna going to McLaren, Prost was already a world champion in the McLaren, and Senna beat him race one. Uh, Lewis beat it Alonso in the McLaren the first year. Um, yeah, true. Is there, uh, Max wins the race on ever start with Red Bull. And there's what, been four, and there's been four drivers with with Max. Yes. What do you you know? It's I'm, I'm Ricardo is a very good driver, but 
um, you know, with all the simulations that we can do with all the data available. Um, Lando just, I believe Lando is just faster than him, period. Uh, took him quite a while to get used to the car. Uh, yes, but he did some good races. Yes, he won a race, yes. But um, I think Lando, I would, I think, I think there's two drivers which did a very good job this year, maybe three, but uh, my, my pick is Lando, it's Lando. But I think uh, Gasly did a very good job. That, that's my pick. And also Ocon did a very good job, in my opinion, because he is racing against Alonso, which is a fantastic driver. He's matching Alonso for, I think they are equal in qualifying or they're very close. He won a race, mm -hmm. which, a car which is a difficult car to drive. Um, yeah, so there is good talent there. There is good new drivers. I also like a lot uh, Leclerc. He's not having a great season, but um, I'm just talking drivers that I think are, are good from the young drivers. Russell, of course, is good, but uh, my pick is Lando, but there is some very good young talents in Formula 1, of course. Now, for sure, I'd, I'd love to ask you another 15, 20 questions here, especially those names that you're mentioning right there. I mean, Gasly, for me, was the performer this season, um, but definitely uh, be before the start of next season, as we did this season, I want to get you on to talk about George Russell being at Mercedes, which is going to be incredibly interesting. So I want to get your thoughts on that, but we don't have time now for that. But um, predictions for Sunday. I think we spoke about that and looks like we have, we share a quite similar opinion about it. You know, if you, if you give me an option, Louis champion, Max champion or a crash, <laughs> I would go for the crash. I think that the, I think it's it's coming. I think. Can I, I throw a twist? Can I? Uh, sorry for jumping in there, and I want to hear. I throw a twist in the tail here. Is that either Valtteri or Checo takes out one of the other guys? A, a wild, a wild prediction. Yes, if Valtteri was to stay with Mercedes, maybe. But he's going to to he's going to to Alpha, and his manager was my manager, so I don't think that they will take that. I don't think they would do that type of work. Uh, Checo, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think Max would take care of it himself. <laughs> and if the crash happens, he's a champion. So I would go Max being a champion. The race result, I would pick the crash. You? Yeah, I mean, I gave you my, my wild card uh, prediction of, of the, one of the number two drivers taking out uh, either, either Max or Lewis. But, um, you know, I'm a massive Lewis fan, what he's done over the years. I've been a Mercedes and Red Bull fan um, for different reasons. Mercedes, the way they, they, you know, their team culture and changed around there. Red Bull for their fighting spirit, the way they've, you know, I love Max. Um, he's brought something different and new to Formula One over the last five years. Um, I'd love to see, and I'm going to get absolutely slated by this, but I'd love to see Max win his, his first title. Um, maybe because I'm also a, a Schumacher fan. So that's those seven victories and Lewis on seven, uh, you know, maybe selfishly, I'd like to keep it there, but I, I would go um, uh, Max, Valtteri, Lewis. Uh, for the race, uh, oh, I think I think we're gonna have um, maybe we're gonna have uh, Valtteri wins because I don't think the the, the <laughs> two will be on the on the checker flag. But I would like also I would like personally I would like uh, Max to win yeah. for some of the reasons that you explain. Also because his father was my teammate, we we had a hard time at the time, but I saw Max. Growing up on the on the on the pits during that year, and uh, yes, he's a nice guy, and um, he drove very very nice. And I always appreciate an aggressive driver. Lewis was fantastic, but uh, yes, I would go with Max. That's my personal opinion to win the title, and I believe that they can have, get into a, a crash. Well, I can't wait for it. And uh, Enrique, as always, a pleasure having you on the Champion Minded Podcast. Thanks so much for coming on and giving your insights. And uh, let's see what happens Sunday. 
Yes, thank you. It was very nice chatting, like always. And yes, let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's see. So there you have it, guys. The Formula One special with Enrique Bernaldi, the former driver for Arrows and the teammate of Max Verstappen's father, Jos Verstappen. As always, this podcast is available on iTunes, YouTube, Amazon Podcasts, and via my website, alistairmccaw.com. Connect with me on social media. I'm on Twitter, at alistairmccaw, on Instagram, be champion-minded, and books are available on amazon.com. So until next time, stay champion-minded.